Hi, everybody, and welcome to Open Dialogue. Now, the people have spoken, and we've elected Donald Trump the next president of the United States. And I, like most people, am shocked. It's like finding out your wife's been cheating on you, Whew, which is devastating enough. And then you find out it's with this pumpkin-headed jackass. And all you can think is, you like that? Is that what you like? He understands me. Look, I don't want to hear it. He hears me. Look, I don't want to hear it. All right, America, we've gone with uh, the bad boy, the risky choice, like open bar at a biker's wedding. The best you can hope for is that it doesn't turn bad too quickly. Okay, okay, listen, I'm not going to turn this into an open dialogue about Trump and the people who voted for him, whether or not they're racist. Which, by the way, a lot of people who voted for him are quick to point out. Like these two women in this uh, L.A. Times article, they're saying that people are calling them rednecks, racist, ignorant, as they try to explain why they voted for Donald Trump. All right, look, you might not be a redneck or a racist, but stupid and ignorant, now that's open for debate. Now, Trump has promised a lot of things to a lot of people, and people pick out the things that they like and overlook the things that they don't. Everybody thinks they know what his priorities are. Now, people say they're well aware of Trump and his flaws. A lot of times people say, I know he's a prick, but he's a prick who gets things done. Which is the big question, isn't it? Because if he's incompetent and can't accomplish anything, what do you have? I tell you what you have, you have an insufferable prick for four years. Ugh. If Trump can bring back good paying jobs and boost stagnant wages, then we don't have a problem. But we all know how he's treated blue collar workers in the past, but we're not going to talk about that right now. No. And I personally have a problem with the Republicans talking about stagnant wages since they're the ones who created them in the first place. Union busting and right to work laws. You know, it's like a pickpocket who's going to help you find your wallet. What are the odds of that happening? See, now all we can do now is hope for the best. We're all in this together. Now, here's a little word to Democrats. Look, we don't need to overanalyze this. It's pretty simple what happened, and it's kind of ironic, too. Now, James Carvel, who uh, managed the Bill Clinton campaign in 92, said the election boiled down to three things. Health care, change versus more of the same, and the economy. You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. See, now, when the original George Bush was trying to figure out what happened, they kind of boiled it down to, it's the economy, stupid. See, now the Democrats got a little distracted because it seems like every week uh, Donald Trump was saying something outrageous and the uh, Democrats looked at him as gifts and that's what they started to focus on and uh, got away from what really mattered to people, what they were going to do for people. So all we can do is uh, show people that we've learned our lesson and remember and never forget, it's the economy, stupid. All right, that's it for Open Dialogue today. Thanks a lot for listening. Please like and share. And as always, you can contact me in the usual places. Oh, yeah, one more thing, one more thing. I almost forgot, I almost forgot. Uh, remember remember the war on ISIS? Remember that? Yeah, yeah. You own that now. That's your war. Remember you said that you knew more about ISIS than the generals? So, you know, it would be nice if you and the generals got together and... Uh, and solve that ASAP? If you can do that, that would be great. All right. Until next time. Peace. Hopefully.